Three, two. The broadcast is now starting. Our attendees are in listen-only mode. And welcome everybody to uh, today's webinar. Uh, my name is Trevor Fight uh, with Applied Software. I'll be your moderator today. Uh, this webinar is brought to you by Live Lab Learning. Live Lab Learning is a subsidiary of Academic Corp, which is a wholly owned applied software company, which has been created to provide world-class training to building design and product engineering professionals. Uh, throughout the presentation, we will encourage you to interact with us, of course, by typing in questions and comments using the questions pane on your GoToMeeting screen, and we'll be answering those questions at the end of the presentation. So we'd love to have you connect with us and keep the conversation going beyond today's event. Um, I'll have my email address, of course, at the end of the presentation. And we are recording today's session, and we'll make the link to the recording available to everyone very soon. Next slide. Uh, of course, our Live Lab Learning site is, is prominent in the top left and bottom right of the slide here. You can see that on that site we have a number of training classes that are available, uh, including, of course, AutoCAD and LT, 3ds Max, Inventor, and next slide, please. Next slide, please. And, of course, AutoCAD Inventor LT fundamentals as well. So we have these classes very specifically structured uh, to allow you to participate from your desk, just like you're doing today, in half-day sessions so that you can come to your office, save travel expenses, get a half-day of training in, take lunch, come back, and complete your work uh, that you have at your desk. So um, we'll go ahead and get started now. If you would, please join me in welcoming today's featured speaker, Randy Brunette. Uh, he's an AutoCAD electrical subject matter expert from Autodesk, and uh, I'm going to let him take it from here. Randy? Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as Trevor said, my name is Randy Brunette uh, with Autodesk. I've been using AutoCAD electrical since 1996 or so, and AutoCAD electrical since 1984. Uh, so I've been with Autodesk for two and a half years now. Uh, before that, I was supporting uh, AutoCAD Electrical, writing training manuals, traveling around the country, implementing software, uh, focusing mostly on the AutoCAD Electrical software. With today's presentation, I hope to um, generate some interest and create excitement about AutoCAD Electrical, what's new and what's happening in the, uh, maybe even some hints about what we might be working on into the future. So with that, I'm going to get started with just some general overview pieces. First part is um, AutoCAD Electrical is becoming much more popular across the world. We have a focus point in the United States is where AutoCAD Electrical really grew up um, and where it was really designed to match that market. But we're also expanding heavily into other markets, uh, EMEA, China, and so on. AutoCAD Electrical is very successful and a very powerful tool. We've won the Control Design Award for 10 years in a row. You can see some of the numbers there for the voting that happened and take place. And uh, last year, we also won the Engineer's Choice Award for Control Design Software here in the United States. No Autodesk presentation would be complete without showing you our digital prototyping wheel. Um, I particularly like this one because it shows AutoCAD Electrical as part of the digital design process, which is really its key point, right? If you have a machine and it moves, something is controlling it, usually something electrical, and AutoCAD Electrical can be the tool that really helps save you the time and give you efficiency gains over any other tools to create your electrical schematics, wiring diagrams, and panel layouts. So with that, we're going to get started with what's new inside of AutoCAD Electrical itself. Here are the topics I plan on covering today. Uh, the first portion of this presentation will be via a PowerPoint, uh, but I also plan on showing you some of the live tools and talk more about them later on as well. Here are the main topics. The, probably the biggest change that's taken place is the catalog search feature. 
Um, I'll be sure to show and talk about that. It's really a major improvement in how AutoCAD Electrical is going to function with the catalog lookup, uh, part entry, uh, pin list, and so on. We also improve the Autodesk to Inventor 2D to 3D workflows, enabling you to use the same kind of interface we're using in AutoCAD Electrical in Inventor to insert the 3D solids uh, that we're going to create. And this workflow is also a focal point of improvements for next year. Now, I can't say too much about what's happening yet until it all comes out, but it is something that we're working hard on developing. I'll also talk about vendor tools integration. This is a very interesting um, path that Autodesk is taking, working with our suppliers and vendors to provide you with more content or tools to help you with the content. In this case, it's going to be working with Phoenix Contactors and Wago to help create terminal strips. We've also improved our public, uh, project publishing, creating um, hyperlinks inside of PDF files so that now you can click on those links and move between the project entities. Click on a coil, it will take you to the panel layout and so on. I'm also going to show you uh, the AutoCAD Electrical Mobile app on an iPad to allow you to take your drawings through a web interface and edit them, mark them up, and transfer them instantaneously or, or close to it back to your designers to where they're working. So enough of a prelude, let's get started. So the first thing I want to talk about is our catalog search feature. As users of AutoCAD Electrical, you're probably aware that we have many different databases and tables inside of AutoCAD Electrical. And what we have done with our new catalog search feature is a couple of things. The first one is we've combined all of those databases into a single interface. The databases are still there, but now you can access them through a single interface, kind of what you see displayed on the screen. In the lower left-hand corner, you'll see the yellow markings that show the pin list information, or in this case, terminal list information, all taking place inside of the same dialog box that we're working with. So in the, with the new 2015, you're really working inside a single interface to enter all the information about a part, including the catalog numbers, uh, descriptions, and so on. This new interface also makes it easier for you to do um, searching for your components. It's been changed to a freestyle type search, you can see that in this dialog box right here, where uh, you can simply type in what you're looking for, a brief description of it, and the search tool will look through all of the fields and all of the table areas to provide you with the information you're looking for. This makes it much more flexible to find components, and it'll, it's also much faster. Some of our tests have shown us it can be up to 3,000 times percent faster for a catalog lookup. So some of those long searches that you might have had in the past really should be a thing of the past. So all of that's taken place. It's also provided a second workflow. Currently, with previous versions of AutoCAD Electrical, you had to start from inserting a component and then doing a catalog lookup number. With the new version, we'll also be able to start from the catalog browser, selecting the part number, and from there, the symbol that you want to insert will appear, and you can select from the desired orientation, type, style, and insert it into your drawing. So it really kind of reverses that entire uh, workflow that you might be familiar with, or in, even better yet, gives you a second alternative for inserting the components. And I'll be sure to um, spend some extra time showing how this will work in the, in the live presentation with the software later on. The next topic we're going to talk about is the Autodesk Inventor 2D to 3D interoperability. Now what's going to happen here is that we're using the same catalog browser interface that you'll be used to in AutoCAD Electrical. You can kind of see that displayed in the lower left hand corner in our Inventor environment. So it'll be the same processes that you're used to in Electrical, looking up the catalog part number, now selecting the 3D component and inserting it into the Inventor environment. So it's much more integrated, uh, and we're even working hard to enhance this in the, into the future versions. Um, 2016 is a real exciting release for us. Next up as well, the vendor tool integration I was talking about with uh, Phoenix Contact and Wago. What's 
as you're aware, working now with terminal strips inside of AutoCAD Electrical can be kind of a, a painstaking task as inserting the terminals is actually pretty easy inside of the schematic and the terminal strip editor is a great tool for pulling all of those terminals together. The challenge was now adding all of the accessories that you needed, the specialized components for each terminal, end plates, end stops, tagging information, all of those little pieces that were not really part of the electrical design but really needed necessary as part of the terminal strip design. So what we have done is working together with Wago and Phoenix Contactor is you can now take that terminal strip information, basically the terminals and the part numbers that you've selected for those terminals, and export that to a file that Phoenix Contactor Wago will import into their terminal strip design environment. Their tools are specifically designed to work with their components and to build up terminal strips. So from that basic information that you send them, just a list of terminal blocks you want, their software will automatically analyze that, determine what accessories you need, what end plates, what stops, what name pieces, all of that, including part numbers, and assemble it into a completed terminal strip that you can now import back into your AutoCAD electrical um, drawing environment. So it's really taking and t uh, leveraging the expertise, the specialized tools of our vendors enable you to use that inside of your electrical designs. Next up is our, our project publishing. This was an often requested tool. Uh, many companies are sending their drawings to their vendors as PDF files and now what we've done is enabled intelligence into those PDF files including linking, cross-referencing between the components, bookmarks, text searches and so on. And this is all built into our project-wide plotting and publishing tools. And as you can see from some of the images there, those links on the source destination will actually jump you through to the various um, pieces in your documentation. Clicking on the, the parent tag will take you to the panel component. Clicking on a cross-reference will take you to the contact, or in the case that's shown here, between source and destination arrows. Really enables the power of that PDF file uh, and puts it into your hands as a consumer of that information. Your customers are going to love you for it. In addition to those major changes, we've also made some uh, smaller uh, improvements to the software. These have been common customer requests. Um, some of them seem you know, not as prevalent, but other ones I think are, are really game changers in how you can use AutoCAD Electrical. Uh, the first one is a library path configuration. In the past, if you were sending your project file to a different customer or a different user or a different department in your company, and their library files were in different locations than yours, you had to go into the project settings and use the default values and reset those paths so everything would continue to work and continue to operate. What this configuration tool enables us to do is actually put in a variable that signifies the default location of the files. So now when we're transferring those projects back and forth, that information will stay viable, that you won't have to go back and change paths, it just assumes whatever the default paths have been set up on your machine and allows you to use that. Sometimes, with some companies it may be pretty minor, with others it's going to just really make their lives much easier. The next one I really like in this list is the smart copy and paste, and I'll be sure to show you that one as well. This has been a very, very frequently request um, addition. What this enables you to do is copy circuits from one drawing and paste them into the other, into another without having to officially save that circuit and insert it from the saved circuit menu. It's like the copy-paste command inside of Windows, but it's actually special tools inside of AutoCAD Electrical that saves that circuit information to a clipboard and then inserts it as a circuit in the other drawing, so incorporating and automatically running all of the insert circuit tools. Very cool, very interesting, um, a very helpful tool that's been added, and I'll be sure to show you how that one will work. In previous versions, you've had to um, save the circuit as a block and then use the insert circuit command to insert it. And of course a couple other things have happened as well that are kind of minor changes. One of the next tools I'd like to talk about as well 
is our AutoCAD electrical mobile environment. So what we're doing with this is not just taking AutoCAD electrical and porting it so that you have the same tool on all of those different devices. Now that just wouldn't really be feasible. It wouldn't work very well. AutoCAD electrical with the tools, with its interface, just isn't really designed for working on an iPad, for example. So what we have done is gone through and create a new environment based on the type of application or the type of hardware you're using. A different experience, whether you're working on an iPad in a mobile environment or working on a desktop environment. And in that light, with AutoCAD Electrical, we now have a new tool called AutoCAD Electrical 360 or AutoCAD Electrical Mobile. This is an, a free iPad app that you can download and, and work with, and it allows you to do a cloud-based interconnection between your drawings that are stored at, the, at any kind of a sharing site. We can use our A360 site from Autodesk. If you're a Dropbox or a Box fan, we can also store and get the drawings from that area. And what happens is this is an application you can use on your iPad where you can download those files onto your iPad if needed or work on them in the storage location, mark them up, view them, add red lines to the files, and save that information back into the cloud. Your designers then can now access that information, see and make the changes required to the drawings, all without having that paper trail, without having to roll the drawings up underneath your arm, get on a plane, and carry them back with all of the problems that arises. I know I've talked with many customers, and one of the big challenges they have is getting the changes back from their as-built and getting the drawings and keeping them marked up to stay corresponded or to keep that link together. Um, the paper drawings end up get piled in a corner or, or they're just not available or they get lost or even just to save all of that shipping money. I know a while back it seemed that I saw some statistics about how UPS was making um, more money on the, on the shipping of the paper drawings than the, what the drawings originally cost. It, it were some crazy things like that. So it it's, can be a great tool to enable you to connect between your workers in the field and your designers that are um, doing the work in the office. And of course, the changes we have, since we're built on top of AutoCAD, we also have all of those changes built into the software as well. Improved design feed, including offline texting, mText improvements, a new UI with a dark um, interface, and in-canvas um, anti-aliasing. So those improvements, anything that's happening with AutoCAD, also happens with AutoCAD Electrical. So next, I'd like to jump into some live examples of what's going to happen. Here are the main ones I plan on talking about, the Component Browser, Inventor, um, AutoCAD 360, and so on. So the first thing I'm going to do is move to my AutoCAD electrical environment. Give me just a second to switch over. And here we have just a standard AutoCAD drawing, this, the WD files that uh, we're used to using. You'll notice, first of all, that the different kind of interface. It hasn't been a major change, but it's just an update to the symbols, to the library components. There's actually two options with this as well. It's a new dark interface, but you can also use a lighter version of it as well. And I have the white background set up just to kind of show you the, you know, make it more visible for you as this is being projected and working with. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is the component browser. So just real quickly, I'm going to insert a rung and go to our menu. So this workflow is the standard workflow that you're used to seeing. Uh, grab a relay coil and insert it onto the rung. So all of this is, is the standard components, the, the workflow that you're used to using in the past. From here, I'm going to do a catalog lookup, and this is where a new catalog browser takes over. You'll see it's a much simpler looking interface. And now we simply type in the information onto this line that you're looking for. A typical freestyle search, so if you've done any Google searches, any other searches across the internet, that's the interface we're going with, something a little more modern and up to date people are familiar with using. You can type in any of the information and the list of components will come up as it uh, for you to select from. So I can just simply pick on one of these components 
and select the part number just like normal, right? So the only real change is that searching, how you get the information and typing in the values. And what's really cool about what's happening here is we've done a couple of things. The freestyle search is one. We also remember the last searches that have been done in a frequently used list, so you can easily go back and find searches you've done previously. And probably one of my favorites is the favorites button. A little redundant there. But if I click on that, anything that I've done a lookup for or a search for in the past, I can save to this favorites list, and I don't even need to bother with doing a search or a lookup. Notice how the search field is grayed out while I have the favorites listing. So it's a way of kind of creating a company-specific database that you're working with. And I think that's going to be a huge improvement that people are really going to take advantage of in the future. Now another point I wanted to, to make about this new interface is how integrated it is with all of the databases. So when you're doing a lookup like I'm doing now, you see just your standard information that you're used to searching on, right? Coils, contacts, and so on. As I'm scrolling, extra information is being added into the dialog box. You might have seen this little bar down here shrink. This is also the same tool where you're going to add new component information. So for example, if I click on our edit button, this edits that catalog database. So the first thing I want to point out, we're all doing everything inside of one simple interface. The background has now changed to yellow to indicate that we're working in the editing mode. And now watch as I'm scrolling across to the right. You'll see my scroll bar at the bottom is shrinking. It's changing size. That's because as I'm scrolling, it's pulling in information from those other databases for me to be able to enter it and make the changes here in my field. Notice as I scroll here, I have the WD block name, 2D symbols now. These would be the blocks that get inserted on the schematics, uh, footprint symbols, the 3D symbol name. So when we move to Inventor, we can place the symbol, the block name that would be inserted with Inventor. We have coil pins, pinned list, and so on. All that would be entered on a single line through a single interface without having to move through all those different databases. So once I've selected the part number I want to use, again, we're back to the standard kind of interface that you're, or workflow that you're used to before. Simply picking OK transfers the information into the dialog box and so on. All right, so now let's take a look at a different workflow. And I'm going to kind of flow this into the inventor one as well. I have a drawing here that I'm going to um, use and export into inventor. You'll notice that I don't have one of the uh, coils or contacts available yet for this coil. So the first thing, I'll just double check on my contact, and I have a part number already added, right? Eaton um, 0AC. So I want to insert the coil that goes with, or the contact that goes with that. Now, from our pull-down menu, instead of going to the contact menu, I can select the catalog browser. I have that already anchored onto the right side of my screen, so I'll just select from that, and here is that same dialog, but working in a different direction. Before, we were selecting from a symbol and then going to a lookup. Here, I'm starting straight from the lookup. In this case, it's going to be a motor starter, so I'll simply slide down to my motor starter area, and notice the search that I have here, just AN16D only a portion of that part number that I'm looking for. Basically, it's just a family type. But that provided me enough information to filter it down to where I see just the Eaton part number. Notice as I select on that part number, the options for that symbol show up. Here is the coil parent. Here's the child contact. I can pick either one that I want to work with. And notice even our edit button is down at the bottom to start associating those components together, including our favorites. I already have this one added as a favorite list. From here, I just simply select the type of symbol that I want to insert with that component and place it onto the line. Again, now the workflow is back to the standard workflow that you're used to working inside of AutoCAD Electrical. Really, we just changed how we can get at the information that we're looking for.
right? So from here, you saw how I did that part number lookup inside of the 2D world, inside of this schematic to get that information. Now I'm going to save that information out to an Excel file and import that into Inventor. So I'm just saving the file now. And for those of you that might not have seen this interface before, um, we'll just call this Oh, there we go. Ace to AIP, right, in the My Documents folder. It's an XML file. From here, I'm going to move to Inventor. That's all I needed to do in, in this case. And now I have my Inventor assembly available. And I, that motor starter that I was working with needs to be inserted into this assembly. You can kind of see this blank area that I'm working with here. So what I'm going to do is in this inventor assembly, I am going to go to our pull down for components and notice that we have a new command called electrical catalog browser. I'll select on that and the same or very similar interface comes up that you just saw inside of electrical. But now we're in the inventor environment and I can work with this in exactly the same way. Here is the part number. I can do a search for that component or that part number and select on the component I want to insert. Notice the image comes up as the 3D motor starter that I want to insert, and I'll simply place it into my drawing. From here, I'll just remove the browser and now move through and do our standard constraining of the components. So we'll first add a little joint, grabbing from one of the bolt holes on the relay. And now just an angular constraint to get it orientated correctly. Right, so with a simple insert command, we now have a similar interface, or the same interface actually, between Inventor and AutoCAD Electrical. Once you're used to using either one of the tools, you'll be able to easily transition over into the other one. From here, we'll just make our harness active and import those wires from that information that I had. Here's the file we just saved and import the information. Notice that component that I have here has a warning sign in front of it. That is because it was just previously inserted into the drawing and we haven't associated it yet with this information. Inventor helps us with that part as well. I just want to assign that to the existing part, that reference tag, and when I click OK here, we can see that everything is now intelligently associated between AutoCAD Electrical and Inventor. Here's even the wire connections where you can see the wire type, the components, and so on. This process brings the wires in from the file that I exported from Electrical, running the wires directly between the connection points on the 3D components. Previously, I've added the wire routings into the assembly of where the wires should run. And from here, I'll just tell it to route all of the unrouted wires into the routings that I created. And now we have our completed assembly with wire number paths and so on. So that really what is really new this year was that electrical component browser to allow you to create that link between the physical components in Inventor and the uh, virtual components or the schematic components inside of AutoCAD Electrical. Next, I'm going to move back to AutoCAD Electrical and I just I want to talk about our AutoCAD Electrical 360 tool. So let me get that fired up. What I'm going to show you is on my iPad, so in just a minute here, I'll be bringing up my iPad and showing you to that on the screen. And I've already loaded in the background an AutoCAD drawing that I got from, uh, downloaded from Dropbox as just one other example. Now the tools I provided here are very simple. At the bottom you'll see the standard AutoCAD 
360 tools. You can see those being able to draw lines, arcs, and circles. So I'll pick maybe the circle command. And uh, let's see, I need to enable editing there. Grab the circle command, pick the points, draw simple objects on the screen. This tool is not meant to be the full design tool. It's really there to help you mark up, edit, and work with your drawings. So in addition to all of those standard tools, we also have some markup tools. For example, you might want to put a cloud around this component and add some texture pieces to it. So at any point, I can come in, mark up this drawing. And again, this information is saved into uh, an external file uploaded into the cloud where your designers will be able to now read this information and make changes to the drawing just based on the information that's available here. In addition to this, instead, in addition to just the standard AutoCAD 360 commands, this is also intelligent and knows about the electrical project file. In the upper right-hand corner, you'll notice our little surfer guide. So if I pick on the surfer tool and then select a component, in fact, let me select one of these relays over here instead. It gives us a little better information. Notice how it's showing us the parent and the child relationships between the components. If I move down to the child area, I can scroll to see each or any one of those children. And if I pick on that child component, it will automatically take me to that location in the file. So again, it's electrically intelligent, yet it's portable. It works on the iPad. In my case, I'm showing this to you on an iPad mini. So just a very small, lightweight, portable device that enables you to read, review, and mark up your drawings save those changes back to um, your designers back in the shop field. So very cool development for especially those that do a lot of work in the field. I think this could be a great tool as well for the markuping, uh, marking and so on of the uh, drawings. Next, I'm going to go in and cover the um, PDF files and how to create a, a hyperlink PDF file inside of AutoCAD Electrical. This follows the same uh, workflow you've done in the past for publishing your projects. To do that, we'll jump up to our Publish Plot tool and select Publish to PDF. From here, we can select any of the drawings and the files we want to work with. Uh, for example, I'll just pick these nine drawings here and process those and create that PDF file. Notice the information comes up for our selections, how you want to make the changes. The real key to this functionality and what's changed is that true type fonts need to be used for the shape fonts. That was really the major change that's happened. And that interface or the change between the two is really transparent. From here, we're creating this to a PDF file. You can see I have some of the changes happening inside of here. If I click Publish, and I'll create the What's New PDF in a Document file, and I'll even save that list of changes. So this will start processing, and it's working in the background. So I'm going to jump over quickly to the Documents folder. And We'll just have to wait for that for a minute while it's publishing in the background. Oh, and I had an error with those problems. I had this before and didn't get this fixed. So um, I apologize for that. Uh, what will happen, what should be happening, and then it's not that I had, as you saw, I had that error in there is that it will create a PDF file that allows us to link between those components. Uh, clicking on the parent coil will take you to the panel layout drawing. Clicking on the cross-references will automatically bounce you to the different cross-reference areas. And trust me, I have had that working. Just my data set today must have an error in it that I um, overlooked. So the next thing that I want to show in our uh, presentation today is the copy and paste circuits command, how that works inside of AutoCAD Electrical. So 
to do that, I'm going to go back to drawing number four, one that we were working on earlier, and just grab a typical circuit, one like this that we might want to use in a different drawing, not just in a different area, that would be handled by the copy circuit command, but in a different drawing. In the past, you had to save that circuit as a block and so on. With our new tools, I'm going to take you to our schematic tab, and notice we have this whole area of copy to clipboard. You can't use the Control C and Control V commands like you would in Windows. We need to, tr and you can't do that because we need to trigger that insert circuit command. But this works almost the same way. So, for example, I want to copy clip. I want to copy a circuit. I select the circuit base point where I want to insert it from and then select the components that I want to insert. So, so far, it's pretty much like the copy command. Now I can move to a different drawing, to a different area. In my example, I'll just jump over here to drawing number five. And now I'll come back to the paste option, and you can see it starts the insert command, the insert circuit command, based off the information that's on the clipboard. I can pick OK. There's my circuit showing up and I can insert it onto my schematic drawing. Right, so you can see my ladder was a little bit different, but what I really wanted to point out here was how I didn't have to do a save circuit command, I didn't have to start the whole new commands, it's all available here, right from pasting and copying to a clipboard tool inside of AutoCAD Electrical. All right, so that kind of ends my live portion of it. I'm just going to do a quick review here for the components. Uh, and let me alt back to our presentation. So as I wanted, to, uh, just as a review, we have the product design suite that has the electromechanical workflows and the 2D, 3D content. You've seen how that, I, I showed you today how we, now have an interface between AutoCAD Electrical and Inventor and how that interface is the same tools. We enter the information using the same tools that tie those two components together and more changes for that are happening in the future. We've also created and changed some project workflows, how to work with that catalog browser, how to get that information, and again, take all of that project database information, the footprint lookups, the pin list information, and all combine that into one easy to use tool, one easy interface to make your changes into the um, database environment, linking all the information together. And finally, we've created our Autodesk or AutoCAD 360 tool. AutoCAD Electrical 360 tool, they are different, that includes electrical intelligence. It understands projects, cross-referencing, and surfacing between the link components. With that, that kind of ends uh, the presentation that I have for today, and I am going to turn this uh, back over to Trevor for the final wrap-up and discussion. Trevor? Okay, thanks very much, Randy, for uh, joining us today. Great presentation, as always. Uh, just to wrap up, before we get to our q and I wanted to review a couple of events that are coming up um, in the future. Uh, next month, on July 31st, we're going to have a digital prototyping workflow with Autodesk Product Design Suite webinar. Uh, that will be hosted uh, between the hour of 12.30 and 1.30 p.m. It really does tie very nicely into the presentation that Randy gave today because AutoCAD Electrical is part of the Product Design Suite Ultimate Package and the integration between Electrical and Inventor uh, is very tight. So you can see the bullet points there of, of the topics that we're going to be covering in that webinar. That is on the 31st of July, 12.30 to 1.30. The registration link is down at the bottom of the page of this uh, PowerPoint slide here. You can also access um, uh, that GoToMeeting link uh, to register uh, by contacting me if you happen to lose it here. Uh, just uh, keep my email address once I give it to you at the end of the presentation. I'll be happy to tell you more about that. But that's also on our Live Lab Learning site as well under the Events tab. Next slide. 
Uh, on the 28th of August, we're going to have uh, Autodesk is going to be here. Uh, a group from the Autodesk technical team will be here for an Autodesk simulation user group. It's going to be in Lawrenceville, Georgia at the Northwood Country Club. Uh, the registration link at the bottom of the page is different than it is for the Live Lab events. This is an Autodesk sponsored event. Um, you can go to the registration link at the bottom of this slide to register. It's completely free. There's no cost. And you can see the agenda there. They're going to be talking um, about what's new in the simulation CFD and simulation mechanical tools. Lunch will be provided. Uh, we'll do some tutorials on a couple of, of the topics and the features inside of simulation, mechanical, and CFD. And then from 1.30 on, there will be an open discussion. So this is a really good opportunity for you to give some feedback to the Autodesk personnel, see what's new in these packages, and learn more about how you can incorporate simulation earlier in the design process to eliminate physical prototypes, get your designs refined, and to market faster. Next slide. Finally, on the 19th of August, uh, we are having a, a factory design and Faro laser scanning uh, webinar. This will be hosted by Applied Software through our uh, Live Lab Learning site. It is on the events page. The registration link is at the bottom of the screen. We're going to basically go through the process of taking a laser scan, uh, converting it to a point cloud from a Faro scanner, then bringing that information into factory design suite place some factory assets around the point cloud information, and then integrate 2D layouts with 3D models of machines within the context of a facility. It's a very cool product, to say the least. It, it does really innovate the way that facility managers and factory uh, people, people that run plants, uh, can really take their existing conditions, very quickly capture those as built conditions, and then do simulations of how equipment will uh, work into the context of that facility, do clash detection and things of that nature. Again, that registration link is at the bottom of the screen. It's the 19th of August from 12.30 to 1 o'clock. And we would certainly uh, love to have you join us for that. You can get to it on the LiveLabLearning.com site under the Events tab. Next slide. I uh, do not see any questions currently that have come across during the webinar, but do we have any questions that you'd like to address to Randy while we've got him here? If so, you've got a, a, um, a window there on your GoToMeeting screen where you can ask questions. And we'll pause a moment to see if we have any questions coming across. And it is a Friday, so I would imagine a lot of people are thinking, geez, I'm getting hungry for lunch now, and it's the weekend. So, so with that, um, just if you would, just remember that you've got LiveLabLearning.com as our website for training, for events, for uh, what we call our tidbit session, very short one-hour sessions that give you some tips and tricks on the software packages presented by Autodesk. Uh, you can also email me if you have any questions about AutoCAD Electrical in general or about this presentation or to get a copy of this pres presentation later. Uh, you will be receiving a link when the presentation is over and posted. And you can review the material you might have missed. Or if you want to go over it again, you can simply just start the presentation and go right through it. We thank you very much for joining us today uh, and for your participation. And have a great a weekend. Follow us on Facebook. It's facebook.com forward slash live lab learning for upcoming training opportunities. And of course, visit our website shown here on the, on the slide, livelablearning.com, for a complete schedule of upcoming and future webinars. Thanks very much. Have a great weekend.